time. <laughs> what brings you here at 8.30 in the morning? Oh, it's Mr. Gracie's idea. He wants me to help out with the sales next week. Really? Well, in that case, I shall have to add your name to the staff list. Mr. Klein of Cutting. Is that spelled with a C or a K? K for the Klein, C for the Cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Klein Cutting. Uh, sign here, please, Ruth. Good morning, Captain Peacock. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Peacock. <coughs> you will be pleased to note that uh, Mr. Klein from Cutting is joining us for the sale. Oh, good morning, Mr. Klein. Oh, uh, rolling round the world, uh, looking for this. Uh, Crikey, half an hour early. What's up, Insomnia? <laughs> the sale starts Monday. Today's Saturday when we, the humble staff of Grace Brothers, are allowed to have first crack at whatever we fancy. In that case, our bags first go with Miss Brahms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cancel that. She looks terrible. Do you know, I was awake all night worrying I wouldn't wake up. Worry? <laughs> Who'd want to buy rubbish like this, even in a sale? Normally, no one, but... Uh... There is one item that Mrs. Peacock has asked me to buy for her. Oi! Hang on a minute. I'm the one that reduced it to that. It is my department, and it's the only chance I'll ever get of paying that price for a fur coat. You could always pay another price. <laughs> Mind you looking like that, you'd be lucky to get a pair of earmuffs. <laughs> well, if you want it, it'll be over my dead body. Please. Look, Mrs. Klein and I have been married 40 years and, and she's never had a fur coat. And after all, I mean, she's in the twilight of her life. Well, in that case, who's going to see her in the dark? <laughs> Nobody asked my opinion. As a member of the staff, I'm just as entitled to buy it as you are. If you can afford it. Afford it? On my overtime alone, I can afford two. But as my wife quite rightly says, they're dead common. Mind you, look all right on Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> mm, that's the trouble nowadays. All the wrong people have the money. <laughs> oh, never mind. Now, look, as we all seem to want the same thing, perhaps we should uh, draw straws for it. We haven't got any straws, and the canteen doesn't open till 10.30. Apart from which, Mr. Humphreys isn't here, and we should give him a chance. Well, of course he's not here. He hasn't got a wife or a girlfriend, so he's not in for it. Take it, Mr. Humphreys, that you have spent the night on the counter. I didn't want to be late for the sale. <laughs> I didn't want to wake up. I was having such a lovely dream. Oh, well, what was it? Well, I dreamt that England were playing Wales at rugby and I was about to hurl myself into the middle of the scrum. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me, Mr. Humphreys, that you dreamt you were actually playing rugby for England? No, I was in the crowd, but I got carried away. I do. <laughs> Have you come for that coat? As a matter of fact, I have. It's not your colour. It's for my mother. <laughs> You've got a five to one chance, because we all want it. Well, as Mrs. Slocum won't agree to drawing straws, what are we going to do? Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Now, why don't we all blindfold ourselves, and then the first one to grab hold of it is the lucky one? I'm not walking around here blindfolded with a lot of hands waiting to get lucky. <laughs> And that goes for me, too. Could be your last chance. <laughs> Ignore him. I am. It's not easy, but I am. I think I've got the solution. Why don't we treat it like the Olympic Games? We'll all go down to the ground floor, line up at the bottom of the stairs, and on the word go, we'll all run up here and the first one to grab the ticket gets it. I'll go along with that. But the ladies should have a start. Oh, yes, the men must be handicapped. No, no, I am already handicapped. I still have a slightly stiff leg as the result of a war wound. A German bullet? According to the way I heard it, he sat on a rusty fork in the cookhouse. <laughs> it did not happen in the cookhouse. I was in the desert, resting by a tank. Well, centurion? No, septic. <laughs> well, if he has a bad leg, he can start just after Miss Brahms. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a disadvantage. My age. 
Oh, well, in that case, you can start alongside Captain Peacock. Mm. Mr. Humphreys, do you have a handicap too? <laughs> Not that it'd make any difference, no. <laughs> but I do think I ought to start in front of Mr. Spooner. I mean, he's so young and agile. Well, then, it's uh, Mrs. Slocum at the top of the stairs, followed by Miss Brahms. Behind her, Mr. Klein and myself, then Mr. Humphreys, and outside in the street, Mr. Spooner. <laughs> right. Come on. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Grace. Grace. Which coat was it, dear? This one here. <laughs> Put it on my account, Peacock. But it's in the sales, sir. Uh, even better. Oh, sir, I'll never forget how happy you've made me. Uh, when was that? <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, everybody. You've all done very well. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Grace. Mr. Grace. <laughs> Is this tea or coffee? Does it taste faintly of bitter coconut? <laughs> now you mention it, yes. It's tea. <laughs> when I phoned Mrs. Klein about the fur coat, she was in tears. I shall have to take her out for a nice lunch now. You bring her here, she'll be in tears again. <laughs> it's disgusting the way they feed us. And the way they pay us. Yeah, Mr. Grace is past it. I reckon he ought to retire. Spending the profits on a fur coat for a chit of a girl, it's disgusting. Yeah, I'd like to know what she had to do to get it. Oh, if you're playing your cards right, all you have to do is flutter your eyelids and smile and you can get anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spooner, what are you doing grinning at me like that? I want the sugar. <laughs> Oh, sorry to trouble you during your break, but I've been asked to nominate a candidate for the Grace Brothers Sales Person of the Year competition. Based on sales figures for the past six months, I have, of course, nominated Mr. Humphreys. Oh, well done, Mr. Humphreys. I think a round of applause is in order, don't you? <laughs> May I thank you for your touching reception? <laughs> I'm completely underwhelmed. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, well, if he wins against the other departments, his name is engraved on the solid silver challenge cup. Do you know I've never even seen that? Well, it's kept in the boardroom. <laughs> the winner does, of course, receive a three-inch replica in silver-coloured plastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr Featherstone had one of them once, and he had it on his mantelpiece, and one day he sneezed and blew it into the fire. <laughs> there also has to be a report from his colleagues... I have the form here. Uh, Captain Peacock, perhaps you wouldn't mind filling it up. Yes, I'd like it back in 15 minutes. But, but this is our break, sir. Uh, Peacock, I'm still considering that rise that you asked about. Uh, would 10 minutes be all right, sir? <laughs> Splendid. Uh, progress report on Wilberforce Claiborne Humphreys. Oh. Age. Keep your voice down, please. <laughs> it's private and confidential. I don't want the whole world to know that I'm accelerating down the road of life towards 40. According to this form, you can see it clearly in your rear-view mirror. <laughs> now, uh, marks out of ten for punctuality. Well, he's never been late. Except last Thursday week. That wasn't his fault. Somebody snatched his handbag. <laughs> that wasn't my handbag, it was my mother's. I was bringing it back to have the crocodile stuck back on it. <laughs> anyway, the police complimented me on the way I brought down the thief with a flying tackle after a 60-yard sprint through the marketplace. Mr. Humphreys, you can hardly boast about making a citizen's arrest on an organ grinder's monkey. <laughs> It had a very strong right arm through turning that handle. Nine out of ten for punctuality. Um, general manner? I would say uh, genial. Yeah, he has got a nice smile. And he has a way with women. As well. <laughs> I'll put good mixer. Next question, uh, customer handling. Uh, any comments? Nobody's complained. Except that Brazilian ballet dancer. No, oh, that was when I complained. He bought a very tight pair of trousers and I had to give him a lift to see if the seams were strong enough. 
That was the one we had to give a credit note to, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, Mr. Humphrey's got two free tickets for Swan Lake. Yes. Customer handling accomplished. Uh, knowledge of stock. Well, I know what I've got and I know what I'm short of. <laughs> Sometimes I'm short of what I wish I'd got. Conversant with stock. How does he react to authority? Well, I'm always there when you need me, Captain Peacock. I've always been available to answer the call for a customer. And even when he's busy, he has been known to help me with my stock. Oh, yeah, if ever you ask him to do anything for you, he always will without complaining. Now, what's the word I'm looking for to describe that? How about crawler? <laughs> it's either ubiquitous or unctuous. But I think for this report, the word excellent will do. On account of he can't spell the other two. <laughs> Tidy, yes. Appearance and clothes, very good. A sharp pencil always in top pocket. Never without pencil. <laughs> uh, does staff member take part in any of our social activities? Well, not officially, but I was thinking of joining the whist club to keep fit. <laughs> How will that keep you fit? Oh, they take such a long time over it. By the time they finish, the last bus has gone and you've got to run home. <laughs> so you could walk. Have you seen me walk? <laughs> I'll put on the fringe. <laughs> now, I just have to add my general comments and take this to Mr. Rumbold. Oh, yes, and uh, they want a photograph of you. Oh, I've got one somewhere taken with Jimmy Savile. What were you doing with him? I was on Jim will fix it. Did he? Yes, but not permanently. <laughs> What's that one with all those girls on? Oh, that's I'm not on there. That's a picture of my mother before I was born. She was on the stage. Well, let's have a look. That's her near the end. Shh, Mr. Grace. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Mr. Grace. Enjoying the canteen fair? Yes, yes Mr. Grace. Grace. There's your photo back, Mr. Humphreys. Oh, am I missing something? Oh, it's just a picture of my mother when she was young and lovely. Oh, was she a chorus girl? Yes, that's her near the end. Good grief. Is that the Golden Garter Girls? Yes, it is. At the old Palace Theatre? That's right. In 1938? I believe that was the date. <laughs> was her name Annie? Yes, it was. Did you ever meet your father? <laughs> well, of course I did. <laughs> I've always regretted running away and leaving her in that state. She was a lively little thing, but I was bent on becoming the world's champion racing driver. <laughs> I was young and foolish, a bunch of flowers, champagne from her slipper, and it was all happening. What are you talking about? You mean... Yes, I'm afraid it's true. Daddy! <laughs> Send for me, Mr. Rambo. Oh, I hope that isn't the way the message was conveyed. No, I asked Captain Peacock to request you to come and see me in your own good time. Well, sit down, sit down. No, 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 not there. Have mine. It's got arms. <laughs> so it has. Oh, and it's warm. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. I have a friend that smokes these. Oh, uh, Perhaps you'd like to give him the box. Well, actually, it's a her, but I will give her the box. <laughs> It'll be handy to keep things in. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Needlework? Her gum shield. She wrestles in mud. <laughs> wrestles in mud? What, for a living? Well, it is now, but when we started, it was just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly see life from every angle. Well, she does. <laughs> Old Mr. Grace is naturally overjoyed that he has found himself an heir. So am I. Of course, it's only a matter of time before you're in that big chair up there. And when you are, I hope you'll remember who it was who made you welcome down here. Oh, I will. <laughs> and uh, if you want to know what's going on, I always keep my ear to the ground. <laughs> you must cover a lot of territory. <laughs> and, uh,
Uh, your tea, sir. Oh, I see you've got your job already, eh? <laughs> First rung of the ladder. Well, goodbye, Rumbold. Hope to be very happy in your new job. As if you get one. I am not leaving. I'm merely having a private talk with old Mr. Grace Jr. here. <laughs> Mr. Grace Humphreys. I shall keep my maiden name. <laughs> oh, well, here is your tea, sir. Oh, uh, excuse me. I expect you would prefer the extra strong executive type tea. <laughs> Uh, may I take this opportunity to mention, sir, that the washroom in the packing is up the creek. None of the taps work, and we have to get the water for making the tea from the cistern in the loo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harmon. You may leave us now. Uh, have I your permission to leave, Mr. Grace? Humphrey? Your permission, Mr. Rambo is still in charge. Thank you, sir. Get out. <laughs> see, see, see the way he treats the lower hoarders? If you do have industrial action on your hands, he'll be the blame. He'll be the cause. <laughs> A very difficult man. Oh! Excuse me. I've got a message for you, Mr. Humphreys. I think I've got it. <laughs> it's from old Mr. Grace. He says, could you pop up and see him when you're free? Just to have a look round the office. Any time before three o'clock? What happens at three? He falls asleep. It's a long day for him, isn't it? Yes. I expect when you get up there, you'll be at it until the store closes. I wouldn't bank on it, dear. <laughs> there we are, madam. We've had it repaired for you. And the factory say they've put in extra strong elastic at the back. <laughs> If I were you, I'd take only shallow breaths to begin with. <laughs> Until you've got it run in. <laughs> Fancy Mr. Humphreys being old Mr. Grace's son. Yeah, it must be awful to find out you've been born on the wrong side of the blanket. It means it's him, he's some sort of a... Basket. <laughs> Madam. Thank you. Miss Brahms. Mr. Humphreys has already told us that his mother was married when he arrived. Yeah, well, I bet she was the only one in the maternity ward wearing a wedding dress. <laughs> He's a very charming man. All he needs is a good woman behind him. Mrs. Slocum, you're not considering... Well, he and I get on very well together, so you watch your step, my girl. Because I, too, might be sitting in that big chair up there. Hmm. Well, if you do, it won't leave much room for him. <laughs> Get all those sweaters out of that drawer, shake them out, fold them up and put them back. Sorry I've been off the floor so long. No, take all the time in the world. Oh, it's nearly half past two. Perhaps you'd like to go home. Oh, no, no, no. I still work here. Besides, I've got a call coming through from my mother. Oh, while you were away, Mr. Humphreys, I, uh, I sold a three-piece. And uh, I put it down to you because I know that if you had been here, you'd have got there first. Oh, I couldn't possibly take your commission. Oh, please, I insist. After all, you're an old friend. Oh, I feel like royalty. <laughs> Men's wear. Your Majesty. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mother. It's Wilberforce. <laughs> Wilberforce, dear. Yes, I've got some news for you. No. Now, will you, well, everything's all right. Will you listen? Yes, I've got a surprise for you. But I can't tell you over the phone, so you'll have to get yourself here. Yes. Get a taxi. No, it won't cost me anything. It's being paid for by a very kind old gentleman who you've met before. <laughs> no, it's not that vicar, dear. I haven't seen him for years. <laughs> no, no, love, it won't be in the evening papers. No, just a bit. <laughs> Hi. Do I understand that we'd have the pleasure of meeting your dear mother? Yes, she's on her way. <coughs> oh, Robert. I have just come from the boardroom. Mr. Grace sends his compliments. Uh, it appears that a member of the staff informed him that you hoped to buy this into sale. Had he known the fact of the time, he would have insisted that Mr. Grace Humphreys had it. 
Therefore, he is giving his secretary next Wednesday off in lieu. And there is the coat with his compliments. <laughs> Who told him? Uh, someone I hope you will reward handsomely in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky devil. How nice for your dear mother. I hope it's her colour. I'm not worried about the colour. I'm just wondering if it's going to be warm enough for her in the ambulance when she finds out that that young man bent on being a racing driver is now just old and bent. <laughs> uh, come in, Wilberforce. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> How do I look? Oh, not a day over 82. It's over 40 years since I last saw your mother. I suppose she's changed a bit. Well, she still looks the same to me. She was a firecracker. Yes, and to think it was you that lit the fuse. <laughs> it's the doorman, sir. Taxi's here. He's just dropped Mrs Humphreys off at the front entrance. Oh, my leg's gone. Send her up. Send her up straight away. Oh. She's in the lift. She's not. Oh, oh, now my leg's gone too. <laughs> Are you being served, madam? <laughs> Is this where he works? I beg your pardon? My son, Wilberforce. You're Mrs. Humphreys. No, you must be Captain Peacock in charge of the floor. <laughs> oh, he was right. You do have a very dominant personality. <laughs> I don't think he's right about the beady eyes, though. <laughs> what a grand sense of humour he has. <laughs> uh, gather round, everybody. This is Mrs. Humphreys, Mrs. Slocum. me saying so. You look far too young to be his mother. Oh, no, really? Yes, really. Oh, I'm nearly 60. <laughs> I don't believe it. No, it's true. Well, I'm nearly 40. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> this is Miss Browns. May I say what a pleasure it is having your son on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> One doesn't often hear that. <laughs> I'm Mr. Spooner, and your son's been over me for six months, and I'm very satisfied. I'm uh, Mr. Klein. Your son's been under me all morning, and I'm very satisfied. <laughs> so many people to please. I don't know how he manages it. Uh, this is his place over here, Mrs. Humphreys. There we are, over there. Oh, <laughs> if I can say so, Captain Peacock, I don't know how he has the time. This way a little bit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, that is where he stands. Oh. And this is his very own tape measure. Oh, I say. It's a bit frayed at the end, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's just about due for a 3,000 inside leg service. I believe you're expected up in the boardroom, Mrs. Humphrey. Yes, I just wanted to get the atmosphere of his environment. <laughs> so this is the actual piece of chalk he used to shorten the sleeves on a 38 long fitting. It's no. It's no. It's all too much. <laughs> and if you can stay in the strain, there's half-eaten pastry here saving for his coffee break. Oh. You still see the teeth marks? Yes, that naughty boy still hasn't been to the dentist. <laughs> oh, well, this is the anchor he, he puts in his cuff. Oh. Now, that's what happened to my 4 7 11. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, there's an empty lift, Mrs. Humphreys. Perhaps you'd like to go up now. <laughs> They've got a surprise for you. Oh, I see. What is it? Oh, it's a secret. It happened a long time ago, and it's to do with your son. That probation officer with the pink pork pie hat's not up there. <laughs> it's nothing like that, Mrs. Humphreys. <laughs> well, it's been very nice to have met you all. The pleasure is all ours. <laughs> Allow me to escort you to the lift. Oh, such manners. <laughs> You know, when one gets to know you, you're not a toffee-nosed git at all. <laughs> you, seen the mother? you just missed her. She just gone up. Oh, well, I'll wait for a few minutes before I go up. It's going to be a very touching reunion. And 40 years is a long time. Apart from which, no one has told her that her secret is known. 
I wonder how she'll take it. So do I. <laughs> Come in, Mrs. Humphreys. Your son's just gone downstairs, but he'll be back in a minute. Come in, come in. You must be Mr. Grace. And you must be little Annie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you forgive me for what I did to you? Well, I've only just arrived. What did you do? <laughs> Leaving you like that when you needed me, when you both needed me all those years ago. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never met you before in my life. Do you remember a youngish man who came to the show, drank champagne out of your slipper and dined you at Romano's? No, I remember an oldish man who bought me a Wellington boot full of milk stout and took me out for a fish supper. <laughs> <laughs> that was me in those days, just like that was you. That's not me. I never danced with feathers. That's me with the balloons and the big hat. <laughs> that one you're pointing to, that's Annie Granger, the girl that couldn't say no. <laughs> Every man's leavings. I've <laughs> seen the rubbish that used to come and see her. <clears throat> you mean I'm not the father of your child? Well, let me put it this way. Were you ever a milk roundsman that got kicked in the head by his horse <laughs> and had to lie down in somebody's front parlour? No. Did you ever drop by parachute in a backyard in Runcar late one Friday night? No. Were you ever caught in the tunnel of love in Western Supermare during the power fail? No. In that case, I can safely say that my son is no relation to you whatsoever. <laughs> what a relief. Get me Captain Peacock. <laughs> Where? Well, it's for you, Captain Peacock. It's his daddy. Yes, sir. Right. I see. An unfortunate mistake, sir. Yeah. Huh? Oh, you're relieved. Yes. So am I. <laughs> What's happening? Come on, tell us. In a nutshell, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Grace is not your father. Mr. Grace is not my father. Well, what does that make me? <laughs> in the circumstances, Mr. Humphreys, I suggest you return to normal, or in your case, as near as you can get to. <laughs> Goodbye, sweet smell of success. Mm. Hello, the pong of poverty. All right, you'll get over it. Oh, I'm not worried about me. It's my mother. She'll be so disappointed. Never mind. She's got a nice fur coat to take her mind off it. I'd forgotten about that. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> There's nothing like a fur coat for getting over a disappointment. Would you like me to wrap it up and make a nice parcel for her? No, I think I'll have it myself. I'm more disappointed than she is. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, you can't wear a lady's ankle-length fur coat in broad daylight. You're quite right, Captain Peacock. I'll have it shortened and wear it in the evening. <laughs>
kind. What brings you here at 8.30 in the morning? Oh, it's Mr. Gracie's idea. He wants me to help out with the sales next week. Really? Well, in that case, I shall have to add your name to the staff list. Mr. Klein of Cutting. Is that spelled with a C or a K? K for the Klein, C for the Cutting. <laughs> Klein Cutting. Uh, sign here, please, Ruth. Good morning, Captain Peacock. Good morning, Captain Good morning. Peacock. <laughs> you will be pleased to note that uh, Mr. Klein from Cutting is joining us for the sale. Oh, good morning, Mr. Klein. Mm -hmm. Her rolling round the world, her looking for this, sir. Crikey, half an hour early. What's up, Insomnia? <laughs> the sale starts Monday. Today's Saturday when we, the humble staff of Grace Brothers, are allowed to have first crack at whatever we fancy. In that case, our bags first go with Miss Brahms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cancel that. She looks terrible. Do you know, I was awake all night worrying I wouldn't wake up. Worry? Who'd want to buy rubbish like this, even in a sale? Normally, no one, but uh, there is one item that Mrs. Peacock has asked me to buy for her. Oi! Hang on a minute. I'm the one that reduced it to that. It is my department, and it's the only chance I'll ever get of paying that price for a fur coat. You could always pay another price. <laughs> Mind you looking like that, you'd be lucky to get a pair of earmuffs. Well, if you want it, it'll be over my dead body. Please. Look, Mrs. Klein and I have been married 40 years, and, and she's never had a fur coat. And after all, I mean, she's in the twilight of her life. Well, in that case, who's going to see her in the dark? <laughs> Nobody asked my opinion. As a member of the staff, I'm just as entitled to buy it as you are. If you can afford it. Afford it? On my overtime alone, I can afford two. But as my wife quite rightly says, they're dead common. Mind you, look all right on Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> That's the trouble nowadays. All the wrong people have the money. <laughs> oh, never mind. Now, look, as we all seem to want the same thing, perhaps we should uh, draw straws for it. We haven't got any straws, and the canteen doesn't open till 10.30. Apart from which, Mr. Humphreys isn't here, and we should give him a chance. Well, of course he's not here. He hasn't got a wife or a girlfriend, so he's not in for it. <laughs> Take it, Mr. Humphreys, that you have spent the night on the counter. I didn't want to be late for the sale. <laughs> I didn't want to wake up. I was having such a lovely dream. Oh, what was it? Well, I dreamt that England were playing Wales at rugby, and I was about to hurl myself into the middle of the scrum. <laughs> you mean to tell me, Mr. Humphreys, that you dreamt you were actually playing rugby for England? No, I was in the crowd, but I got carried away. I do. <laughs> Have you come for that coat? As a matter of fact, I have. It's not your colour. It's for my mother. <laughs> You've got a five-to-one chance, because we all want it. Well, as Mrs Slocum won't agree to drawing straws, what are we going to do? Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Now, why don't we all blindfold ourselves, and then the first one to grab hold of it is the lucky one? I'm not walking around here blindfolded with a lot of hands waiting to get lucky. <laughs> And that goes for me, too. Could be your last chance. <laughs> Ignore him. I am. It's not easy, but I am. I think I've got the solution. Why don't we treat it like the Olympic Games? We'll all go down to the ground floor, line up at the bottom of the stairs, and on the word go, we'll all run up here and the first one to grab the ticket gets it. I'll go along with that. But the ladies should have a start. Oh, yes, the men must be handicapped. No, no, I am already handicapped. I still have a slightly stiff leg as the result of a war wound. A German bullet? According to the way I heard it, he sat on a rusty fork in the cookhouse. <laughs> it did not happen in the cookhouse. I was in the desert, resting by a tank. A centurion? No, septic. <laughs> well, if he has a bad leg, he can start just after Miss Brahms. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a disadvantage. My age. 
Oh, well, in that case, you can start alongside Captain Peacock. Mm. Mr. Humphreys, do you have a handicap too? <laughs> Not that it'd make any difference, no. <laughs> but I do think I ought to start in front of Mr. Spooner. I mean, he's so young and agile. Well, then, it's uh, Mrs. Slocum at the top of the stairs, followed by Miss Brahms. Behind her, Mr. Klein and myself, then Mr. Humphreys, and outside in the street, Mr. Spooner. <laughs> right. Come on. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Grace. Grace. Which coat was it, dear? This one here. <laughs> Put it on my account, Peacock. But it's in the sales, huh? Uh, even better. Oh, sir, I'll never forget how happy you've made me. Uh, when was that? <laughs> Carry on, everybody. You've all done very well. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Grace. Grace. Is this tea or coffee? Does it taste faintly of bitter coconut? <laughs> now you mention it, yes. It's tea. <laughs> when I phoned Mrs. Klein about the fur coat, she was in tears. I shall have to take her out for a nice lunch now. You bring her here, she'll be in tears again. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting the way they feed us. And the way they pay us. Yeah, Mr. Grace is past it. I reckon he ought to retire. Spending the profits on a fur coat for a chit of a girl, it's disgusting. Yeah, I'd like to know what she had to do to get it. Oh, if you play your cards right, all you have to do is flutter your eyelids and smile, and you can get anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spooner, what are you doing grinning at me like that? I want the sugar. <laughs> Oh, sorry to trouble you during your break, but I've been asked to nominate a candidate for the Grace Brothers Sales Person of the Year competition. Based on sales figures for the past six months, I have, of course, nominated Mr. Humphreys. Oh, well done, Mr. Humphreys. I think a round of applause is in order, don't you? <laughs> May I thank you for your touching reception? <laughs> I'm completely underwhelmed. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, well, if he wins against the other departments, his name is engraved on the solid silver challenge cup. Do you know I've never even seen that? Well, it's kept in the boardroom. <laughs> the winner does, of course, receive a three-inch replica in silver-coloured plastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr Featherstone had one of them once, and he had it on his mantelpiece, and one day he sneezed and blew it into the fire. <laughs> There also has to be a report from his colleagues. I have the form here. Uh, Captain Peacock, perhaps you wouldn't mind filling it up. Yes, sir. I'd like it back in 15 minutes. But, but this is our break, sir. Peacock, I'm still considering that rise that you asked about. Uh, would 10 minutes be all right, sir? Splendid. <laughs> uh, progress report on Wilberforce Claiborne Humphreys. Age. Keep your voice down, please. <laughs> it's private and confidential. I don't want the whole world to know that I'm accelerating down the road of life towards 40. According to this form, you can see it clearly in your rear 